Since Chris Bowen uh, announced the vehicle to grid standards just recently, things have progressed. So as you know, recently Chris Bowen announced the vehicle to grid standards uh, for Australia. And uh, there've already been some uh, testing going on. So the BYD Atto 3 bi-directional charging was successfully trialled. The 2024 Tesla Model Y bi-directional charging vehicle to grid, vehicle to home was trialled and succeeded. A Volvo EX30 bi-directional charging was successfully trialled. An MG4 bi-directional charging was successfully trialled. And so there's all these trials that have gone on. Uh, various states around Australia, Queensland, ACT, South Australia have all done their own little trials of vehicle to grid, all successfully completed. So vehicle to grid is, at the moment when you plug your EV in to a charger in your house, the house provides power to charge the car's battery. That might come from your solar, it might come from the grid might even come from your house battery but vehicle to grid is where your vehicle puts power back through the charger into the house and into the grid now it does require a bi-directional charger and there are a number of partnerships and uh, companies that have uh, that have been looking into this and while you're watching, um, can you please click that like and subscribe button? Thank you very much. It does help me. So there's quite a few companies in Australia that are claiming to be the first, but they can't all be the first. So I'm going to run through a few of them in no particular order. Jet Charge has got uh, a claim to be at the forefront of Australia's most innovative vehicle to grid projects. Um, and it has taken part in uh, South Australia, I believe even WA, some parts of New South Wales, Victoria, New Zealand, Queensland so far. And um, it's already looking at developing um, a bi-directional charger because in order to do this, you need to have a charger that will take power in as well as out. And that's where at the moment the expense lies. Um, so Jet Charge's um, bi-directional charger, I believe it's only approved for inst installation in South Australia. Western Australia, WA stands for wait a while. Um, we're so far behind the eight ball here, it's unbelievable. We have an electric monopoly controlled by the government. Um, we can't even have higher than five kilowatt inverters on our solar systems. It's just crazy. But enough of that. So, as I've said, uh, Jet Charge, they've done um, some. Uh, Energex is another one uh, that has got um, something in the pipeline. Um, now, You've got to remember that not all EVs are capable of this, and I'll come to that in a minute. So um, another one that has recently been announced is Ambibox with Red Earth. Um, so the um, uh, Australia-made energy storage solution provider, Red Earth Energy Storage, otherwise known as Red Earth, um, They've got a partnership with Ambibox, which is a leading DC um, EV charging company. And they're going to produce a bi-directional, so vehicle to grid EV charger. And uh, these char chargers will be purchased in Australia and New Zealand for the customers here. Um, now, Red Earth has got a manufacturing facility in Dara, Queensland where it's likely um, that these will uh, come from. So the idea for them is that um, 
Q2 2025, uh, they'll start to make um, these uh, bi-directional chargers available. Now that is likely to be a three phase first up and then in uh, Q4 2025, a single phase version. So keep your fingers crossed that they can stick to um, that. So there's, um, as I've said, there's only a few cars that can do this at the moment. Now, a lot of cars have got vehicle to load. So you've got the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and 6, Kia um, EV6 and 9. Uh, now, they're capable of outputting 3.6 kilowatts. Um, the Atto 3 and the Seal from BYD are capable of outputting 2.4 kilowatts. And the MG ZS EV and the MG4 currently are capable of putting out 2.2 kilowatts. Now, there was, as I said, a 2024 Model Y that was used in a test. And I don't know what output uh, it was capable of. Uh, I believe it was something like the 11 kilowatts. But we shall wait and see. One of the big questions people have is, it's going to affect my car battery. It'll make it degrade sooner. Look, in some respects, that is true. Uh, the current LFP battery technology that is being produced now in cars is capable of quite a lot of cycles. Now, cycles is from 100 to 0 to 100. Um, now... Originally, they were quoting 3,000 cycles for that, 2,000 cycles for NMCs, but they're now looking at five, 6,000 cycles. So if you did that every day, 100% to zero, charge it back up again, and you did that every day, that's five or 6,000 days. Um, that's an awful lot of years. Your car will have fallen to bits by that time. So I don't think it's really going to affect LFP batteries too much, especially as you're not going to drain it completely because I know you can set the minimum amount of car charge that you want left there. Um, you, you're not going to, as I said, do it every day. So little bits now and again, it's not going to happen every day of the week. Really, it's going to be supporting the grid. So when the grid needs something and your car's charged in and above its minimum set limit, the grid can go, oh, pretty please, give me some power and we'll pay you handsomely for it. Uh, I do know in England that they get paid rather a lot for exporting when there's a huge demand and then they can charge their uh, home batteries back up very cheaply. So a lot of places are making money. You've only got to look at um, the power wall uh, grid thing that they did. I think it was in Texas. The power wall people were exporting their power and then charging their power walls back up. And they were making money doing it. So there's every chance that you could maybe make a few bob here. Maybe not, but you will certainly offset some of the cost of your electricity. And it's really only at uh, in two situations. One, when the grid needs stabilising. And two, when there's a power failure and your house needs it. You're not going to the grid, you're going to the house. But if you can put 11 kilowatts into your house, um, you can power your house uh, for quite some time if you think about it your average tesla model y has got a 60 kilowatt hour battery in it um that's the rear wheel drive you know that's five hours you can support your house at full power now your house doesn't take 11 kilowatts con constantly that's only in surge periods the average uh, power consumption of a house at the moment is, look, 20 kilowatts, maybe 30 kilowatts, depends upon your house, I suppose. So you're going to be able to power your house for a few days. LFP batteries, good. 
NMC batteries, uh, maybe not quite so good because they've got a lower life uh, number of cycles to them because of the way they go. So really, you need to keep them between 10 and 80 or maybe 20 and 80 percent. Um, so they might not last quite so long, may degrade a bit quicker. But honestly, I still think they're going to last 10 years. I don't know. What do you think? Make a comment below. So what do you think of this vehicle to grid uh, that's now coming into Australia? I'm sure as new cars come into the market, they'll be more than capable of doing this. Some, I believe, already are. I mean, you've got your Leaf and your um, Mitsubishi Outlander FEV uh, that have got Chadamo plugs that were originally designed for bi-directional charging. Uh, the um, current uh, Type 2 is capable of it. Uh, it's just got to be set up. So um, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Now, while you're down there, don't forget there's that like and subscribe button, pretty please. It does help the channel. And also down in the description, Kofi referral, Tesla referral, etc. Please have a look and help me out there. Thank you to everybody that has. And I'll see you all very soon.